Good morning, and a very warm welcome to you all. Let us begin today's service with the singing of hymn number 92. I shall read the third verse. God's will he makes his own, and nothing can him stay. His feet are shod for God alone, and God alone obey. Hymn number 92. The scriptural selection is from Romans. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but <clears throat> uh, we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation work is patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who <clears throat> is the figure of him that was to come, <clears throat> but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men who unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience were many made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us have a few moments of silent prayer and then pray together the Lord's Prayer and I will follow with the spiritual interpretation as found in Science and Health.
our Father, who art in heaven. Our Father, Mother God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive <clears throat> us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love over all and all. Let's unite in singing hymn number 499. This is from the new hymnal. I am the Lord, there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, I girded thee, though thou hast not even known me. But know that from the rising sun to the west, there is none beside me. For I am the Lord, there is none else. There is no God beside me. Hymn number 499.
A cordial and warm welcome is extended to all of you this morning. The lesson sermon you will hear this morning has already inspired other congregations in Christian Science churches in Tokyo, Sydney, Cape Town, Stockholm, Dublin, and Buenos Aires. These churches and this church are all branches of the Mother Church, the First Church of Christ Scientists in Boston, Massachusetts. We lovingly welcome young people to our Sunday school, which meets concurrently with our Sunday services. There, they are taught the healing truths of Christian science and the practical application of the truth to their daily challenges. <coughs> Every Wednesday evening, we hold a testimony meeting. After readings from the Bible and from the Christian science textbook, the congregation is invited to share personal experiences and healings that have come from their study and application of Christian science. All are invited. Please join us. The meeting begins at 8 p.m. All Christian Science churches maintain a reading room. Ours is located here in this building and you are welcome to use it as a quiet place for study and prayer. Christian Science literature is available to borrow or purchase. The reading room is open for a half hour after every Sunday service and for a half hour preceding every Wednesday service. This being the first Sunday of the month, I shall read from the Manual of the Mother Church by Mary Baker Eddy, Article 8, Section 1, A Rule for Motives and Acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. Man, that 
thou art mindful of him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Thou hast crowned him with glory, glory and honor. of thy fingers thou hast put all the things under his feet when I consider thy heavens thou wert my fingers, the moon and the stars, the moon and stars which thou hast ordained. When I consider The Bible and the Christian Science Textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. The lesson sermon for today begins on page 24 of the Christian Science Quarterly. The subject, Adam and fallen man. The golden text is from the New King James Version of the Bible, Genesis. Who told you that you were naked? The responsive reading is from Isaiah and Joel. We have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your re-reward. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord, your God, that hath dwelt wondrously with you 
and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. The following readings comprise our sermon. From the Bible, Jeremiah. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Isaiah, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Genesis. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the earth, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Galatians. Having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? And correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Does God create a material man out of himself, spirit? It may be worthwhile here to remark that according to the best scholars, there are clear evidences of two distinct documents in the early part of the book of Genesis. One is called the Elohistic because the supreme being is therein called Elohim. The other document is called the Jehovistic because deity therein is always called Jehovah or Lord God, as our common version translates it. The second record unmistakably gives the history of error in its externalized forms, called life and intelligence in matter. It records pantheism, opposed to the supremacy of divine spirit. But this state of things is declared to be temporary, and this man to be mortal, dust returning to dust. In this narrative, the validity of matter is opposed, not the validity of spirit or spirit's creations. Man reflects God. Mankind represents the Adamic dream and is a human, not a divine creation. The mythological theory of material life at no point resembles the scientifically Christian record of man as created by mind in the image and likeness of God and having dominion over all the earth. Divine science, the word of God, saith to the darkness upon the face of error, God is all in all, and the light of ever-present love illumines the universe. Hence, the eternal wonder 
that infinite space is peopled with God's ideas, reflecting him in countless spiritual forms. The standard of perfection was originally God and man. Has God taken down his own standard and has man fallen? Matthew. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. First Peter. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Genesis. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Galatians, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whence comes a talking, lying serpent to tempt the children of divine love? Here, there is an attempt to trace all human errors, directly or indirectly, to God or good, as if he were the creator of evil. The allegory shows that the snake talker utters the first voluble lie, which beguiles the woman and demoralizes the man. Knowledge and pleasure, evolved through material sense, produced the immediate fruits of fear and shame. Ashamed before truth, error shrank, abashed from the divine voice calling out to the corporeal senses. Its summons may be thus paraphrased. Where art thou, man? Is mind in matter? Is mind capable of error as well as of truth, of evil as well as of good, when God is all and he is mind and there is but one God, hence one mind? Fear was the first manifestation of the error of material sense. Thus, error began and will end the dream of matter. In the allegory, the body had been naked, and Adam knew it not. But now, error demands that mind shall see and feel through matter, the five senses. The first impression material man had of himself was one of nakedness and shame. Had he lost man's rich inheritance and God's behest, dominion over all the earth? No. This had never been bestowed on Adam. 
the purpose of the Hebrew allegory representing error as assuming a divine character is to teach mortals never to believe a lie. Psalms. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Revelation. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in seven in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Throughout all generations, both before and after the Christian era, the Christ, as the spiritual idea, the reflection of God, has come with some measure of power and grace to all prepared to receive Christ, truth. What is this supposed power which is opposes itself to God? Serpent, Ophus in Greek, Nakash in Hebrew, subtlety, a lie, That false claim, that ancient belief, that old serpent whose name is devil, evil, claiming that there is intelligence in matter, either to benefit or to injure man, is pure delusion, the red dragon. And it is cast out by Christ, truth, the spiritual idea, and so proved to be powerless. There will be greater mental opposition to the spiritual scientific meaning of the scriptures than there has ever been since the Christian era began. The serpent, material sense, will bite the heel of the woman, will struggle to destroy the spiritual idea of love, and the woman, this idea, will bruise the head of lust. The spiritual idea has given the understanding a foothold in Christian science, the seat of truth and the seat of error, of belief and of understanding. Yea, the seed of spirit and the seed of matter are the wheat and the tares, which time will separate the one to be burned and the other to be garnered into heavenly places. When will mankind wake to this great fact in science? Luke. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Second Corinthians. I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Matthew. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, 
command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Angels are God's representatives. These upward-soaring beings never lead towards self, sin, or materiality, but guide to the divine principle of all good, whither every real individuality, image, or likeness of God gathers. The belief that man has existence or mind separate from God is a dying error. This error Jesus met with divine science and proved its nothingness. The only civil sentence which he had for error was, Get thee behind me, Satan. The relinquishment of error deprives material sense of its false claims. Christ is the true idea of voicing good the divine message from God to men, speaking to the human consciousness. The Christ is incorporeal, spiritual, yea, the divine image and likeness, dispelling the illusions of the senses, the way, the truth, and the life, healing the sick and casting out evils, destroying sin, disease, and death, Above error's awful din, blackness and chaos, the voice of truth calls out, Adam, where art thou? Consciousness, where art thou? Art thou dwelling in the belief that mind is in matter and that evil is mind? Or art thou dwelling in the living faith that there is and can be but one God and keeping his commandment? Resist evil, error of every sort, and it will flee from you. Isaiah, shake thyself from the dust. First Corinthians, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made a lie. Acts. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt, this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. 
and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Is there no divine permission to conquer discord of every kind with harmony, with truth and love? Human codes, scholastic theology, material medicine and hygiene, fetter faith and spiritual understanding. Divine science rends asunder these fetters and man's birthright of sole allegiance to his maker asserts itself. We never read that Luke or Paul made a reality of disease in order to discover some means of healing it. Jesus never asked if disease were acute or chronic and he never recommended attention to laws of health, never gave drugs, never prayed to know if God were willing that a man should live. He understood man, whose life is God, to be immortal, and knew that man has not two lives, one to be destroyed, and the other to be made indestructible. To reduce inflammation, dissolve a tumor, or cure organic disease, I have found divine truth more potent than all lower remedies. And why not, since mind, God, is the source and condition of all existence? Before deciding that the body, matter, is disordered, one should ask, who art thou that replies to spirit? Can matter speak for itself? Or does it hold the issues of life? Cast out all matter of evil. Preach the gospel to every creature. Speak the truth to every form of error. Tumors, ulcers, tubercles, inflammation, pain, deformed joints are waking dream shadows, dark images of mortal thought which flee before the light of truth. As in Adam, error, all die. Even so in Christ, truth shall all be made alive. First Thessalonians. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. John, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jude, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Dear reader, which mind picture or externalized thought shall be real to you, the material or the spiritual? Both you cannot have. You are bringing out your own ideal.
through discernment of the spiritual opposite of materiality, even the way through Christ, truth, man will reopen with the key of divine science, the gates of paradise, which human beliefs have closed and will find himself unfallen, upright, pure and free, not needing to consult almanacs for the probabilities either of his life or of the weather, not needing to study brainology to learn how much of a man he is. Citizens of the world, accept the glorious liberty of the children of God and be free. Let us unite in singing hymn number 51. 
eternal mind the potter is, and thought the eternal clay. The hand that fashions is divine, his works pass not away. Man is the noblest work of God, his beauty, power, and grace. Immortal, perfect as his mind, reflected face to face. Hymn number 51. scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. In its correlative scripture from 1 John, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Amen. 